U.S. Women's Open, presented by the brands of Ebonite International. Hello, my name is Del Warren, Vice President of the Kegel Training Center, and it's a, it's a real pleasure today to discuss uh, one of my favorite topics, getting together with uh, four of the best uh, players in the world and four players that have won major championships as we uh, continue to prepare for the 2011 BPA United States Open. Um, Kelly Coolett, Tommy Jones, Jason Couch, and Liz Johnson. Um, and what we're really going to talk about is some pretty insightful stuff. Um, how these guys actually prepare for a major championship uh, and all the intricacies that, that go into it. And as we know, bowling is a pretty complex sport. There's a lot to consider. Uh, but when it comes to major championships, much like Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus said, you know, they pre their whole year is based around preparing for the majors. Okay, so why don't we start with Jason Couch. Jason, you know, with all, all the things that you have to consider, um, how do you prepare for a U.S. Open? Well, I'm going to go out there with an arsenal that I know is predictable. The U.S. Open plays really flat on the lane conditions. So you have to go out there. You don't want balls that change directions. You don't want balls that go really straight. You want something in between, what me and Tommy refer to as our benchmark balls. You know, I'm going to go out there with balls that are going to be really consistent, and then I'm going to start to the outside, and I'm going to start with every bowling ball I have out there and throw some shots in that zone. If nothing looks good, I move to another zone until I find, you know, something that's consistent and go from there. I'll start with three and a half, four inch pins, very strong pins, but they're very predictable down lane and not going to change direction. So uh, how many balls would you bring with you to a tournament like the US Open? Oh, well, I'm going to bring about 30 bowling balls with me, but you know, for a practice session, you don't have a lot of time. So you, you really want to go down there with the middle of the road bowling balls, those middle 10, you know, you have 10 that are weaker, 10 that are stronger. Go with that middle 10, get comfortable with what you see, and then if the surface plays a little different and I think I might need something that's a little straighter, then I will go to that. But I always start with my benchmark balls in the middle to, to let me make good decisions on how I want to play the lanes. Jason, that's really interesting. Um, and certainly you've uh, bowled a lot of majors in your career and uh, you've got your system and, and obviously uh, because you've been successful, it works. So uh, now let's go to uh, Tommy Jones. Um, Tommy, do you kind of do the same thing, Jason, or do you do something a little bit different? Yeah, to a degree. What I, I typically will do, I'll take a wide range of bowling balls into practice. I'll take a couple balls on the on the more aggressive end of the spectrum and a couple balls on the, on the end of the spectrum that are, are non-aggressive. And then I'll have my benchmark balls, as Jason was saying. Uh, what I like to do with that is to try to figure out, I know my bowling balls going in. So it's very important that people that are coming to bowl this event know their bowling balls. If you know your bowling ball, then you can kind of go and you can fit a ball in if you have to drill a ball there or something of, the, of, of that nature. Um, for me, I'm looking to find out if I can eliminate the more aggressive balls or I can eliminate the non-aggressive balls, which side I'm going to eliminate and where I need to fit. Um, for me, it's always very important to cross most of the house while I'm bowling practice to see if one of the house plays a lot differently than the other. And to uh, if it's a split set house or anything of that nature. You know, these are all information that you have to find. You'll go through and you, know, you, you don't want to get go to a pair that you didn't bowl practice on and you bowl a bad game on it, and now you think it's you, and you make a bad move. These are all pieces of information that can help you if you get into trouble and everything else. But knowing your equipment is my number one key to bowling a major. You know, you have to be able to make a confident decision to change balls, and if you learn that in practice, you'll be ahead of the game. Interesting. Uh, kind of similar, but but certainly two different approaches. Liz, um, you're getting ready. You're bowling practice. Mm -hmm and uh, you got your equipment, what do you do? Um, I agree with Tommy, you definitely have to know your equipment. Um, my, my idea is usually bring in anywhere between eight and 10 balls. I don't usually like to bring too many because for me sometimes, uh, my game's a little, sometimes a little more simple and any, if I get into too, many, too much equipment, it kind of gets out of the confusion stage mm -hmm. and you, like, you, you kind of uh, second guess yourself on what to bring. Um, I usually like to, Definitely start at the beginning of the practice session and uh, go from different different ends of the house because, like Tommy said, they, you know, the, the low end, you, usually when you get to like the middle of the house, it tends to hook a little bit more and the, the high end could be a little, a little tighter or, or not. So definitely like to um, take the whole end of the house and uh, just learn your equipment and learn 
uh, different angles of, of the lanes, you know, start on uh, first arrow, the second arrow, third arrow, definitely get an idea of, of, of the lanes and uh, with, with that, with where the, where the lanes are playing, um, gotta shoot spares. Um, so the, the, um, especially bowling in uh, some of the big is the majors. Uh, you're going, you're not bowling sprint bowling, you're going to a marathon and, uh, you know, you miss a couple spares here and there and uh, that could be, you know, a cut or a TV show. And, uh, you know, definitely spares is, is uh, almost probably one of the most important things, on, especially bowling on the majors. And uh, if you're bowling on a short pattern, you're bowling on a long pattern, the way you shoot your corner pins may be a little bit different. So you definitely want to, you want to know uh, certain angles on, on corner pins and all that. So not only is it important that you're adjusting to try to find the pocket all the time, but you're, uh, you're telling everyone that, uh, uh, that the pattern can sometimes dictate that your strategy for your spares change as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, depending on um, a, certain, a certain pattern, a short pattern, a long pattern, there are times when I may use my, my spare ball for, for a spare, and other times I may use my, uh, my first ball for a spare. So uh, in this case, we're bowling again on 39 feet, 5.21 uh, ratio, where there's some oil in the middle, but mm -hmm. certainly uh, from the time you guys bowl on the fresh, so when we really get on the burn, you may change your spare shooting strategy uh, when you really when they really start to hook. Yes. Okay. Do you, you do that as well sometimes? I don't typically because I throw it a lot harder than most people, so you know, it's not going to uh, it's not going to affect my plastic ball as much. I do use a plastic ball, a low friction uh, spare ball, at the majors at every major, and I throw it at straight as I possibly can at every spare. The only thing that I will hook at is double wood at the U.S. Open. It's some weeks on tour, when the lanes play a little easier, I will hook at the 3.610 or something like that, but not at the U.S. Open, not when, you know, the pattern's harder and, and you know, you need to know exactly what's going on. Jason, is that what you do? Do you throw hard and straight at everything? Or? Without question, especially at the U.S. Open. All the majors, you know, the pattern is so flat and you want to take all the air out of play, you know, and spares are paramount. You know, spares pay the rent is our, you know, is what we say on tour. That's kind of our cliche saying is, you know, all the guys can strike out there, all the women can strike on their tour. You know, it's just, you got to fill the frames and to, you got to make all those spares and keep it simple with the, with the hard plastic ball. Very good. So now uh, we wrap up this session uh, with the defending champion. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about how you're going to prepare. Um, are you going to prepare the same? Is the, now that you've bo actually bowled on the pattern and uh, you've had a couple days, do you prepare the same as you did last year? Or is it, does it change how you're going to prepare? Um, some things will be similar. To me, just like the gentleman the lady said, that uh, equipment, you have to know your equipment, what's in your bag. I'll walk out there with 8 to 10 bowling balls, and I try to deduct. I try to take balls away that I don't want to try to make them work. If I don't think they're close, they automatically go back in the paddock. From there, surface adjustments on the lane during practice session. If I do make an adjustment, it will be very light, because chances are, even though the next day they do them the same, they might just be that tad bit different. Uh, what I'd like to add on to what the rest of the people said is that I'll actually watch another bowler similar to my style to see where he or she is playing so that I'm lost or I just kind of want to redefine and, and make sure what I'm doing is correct. I'll watch what he or she is doing and again it'll just give me some insight of what's going on with the lane that week. As this pattern started to break down because I can play in my comfort zone, it's going to give me some room to move left, maybe not so much right. So I know my arsenal is going to be more of the midline, maybe a few upper bowling balls, but more towards the middle and lower end of, of our arsenal so that when I move further left, I'm still able to get around the corner and get the ball to kick. So you're going to be using a lot of symmetrical uh, ebonite balls, correct? I think so. I mean, definitely the, the 2.0 and the vital signs are good balls, and it's going, only going to allow me to play in for so long. But after that, I love the symmetricals just because they're so much more continuous in the back. And that's when I really look forward to that game on, 5-inch, five 5.5-inch five pin, you know, just nice and shiny out of the box. It'll still get the ball to, to flare down the lane and give me that kick I need in the back. I know the the Weber team uh, that, that they uh, when they see the lanes like this they like to migrate to the hard balls and the curve balls and that really seems to match up well for them as well. So I agree that the hard ball really likes friction and considering the surface we're going to be bowling on for the U.S. Open, I think that will be one of the balls to go to when uh, when the lanes start to burn out. No doubt, no doubt. Well. Uh, Tell us a little bit, uh, a little bit about how you shoot spares. Then you know um, you, you're already going to be playing deep. Uh, we can already see that towards the end of the, the blocks, the lanes are going to hook. Does that uh, does that change your tactic on how you shoot spares from the fresh to the to the burn? 
Well, um, I'm able to use my, my comfort release when the lanes are fairly fresh and there's enough oil in the lane. But as they have the tendency to break down and the fronts go away, um, really I'll still continue to use a hard plastic ball. My angles will still be very, very similar. If anything, I'm just going to maybe relax my grip pressure and let my wrist go a little bit more flat at the bottom of the swing. Therefore, the ball will roll more end over end and again take the lane out of play just to make it one straight diagonal line and not have to worry what the lane is doing. And all the major patterns, whether it's the women or the men's US Open, spares are the most crucial part of the game. It really dictates who makes cuts one after another and that's um, no different for the ladies US Open. You can strike a lot and this pattern is going to be good at certain parts, certain stages of, of the format but spares are going to make you advance and, and really decide who it will be. No doubt. Uh, filling frames, uh, you know, not only that, but uh, you know, filling frames also keeps pressure off your strike ball because if for some reason uh, you're not making spares, it makes, you know, uh, when you do get on a good pair and you do get lined up, it makes puts more pressure on you psychologically to actually throw a lot of strings. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the next uh, the question I have for you guys is do you actually prepare your, your physical game any different and knowing that there's a major coming about maybe a week, two weeks before, uh, you know, getting ready for the big money tournaments, the, the longer formats, the more stress that you have to go through. Do you do anything with your physical games a little different? And I'll start over here with Kelly. Boy, Dale, that's a really good question. Um, you know the expression, less is more? And I think when it comes to majors, I think trying to hook the ball is not necessarily a good thing. Obviously, you have to know what your assets are and what you can do. But I think if you can take your hand and back it out sometimes, maybe not be so aggressive with your swing, and really allow the lane to dictate what the ball is going to do will be beneficial. Um, angles, you want to keep them tighter. You really don't want to give up the 1-3 pocket. You know, it's always safe to leave a flat 10 or, or a ring 7 pin and know that you can make that rather than trying to go for the big strike and, and end up with the, with the big 4. So I think a safe bet is sometimes the way to go and just to give the pocket, because if you can grind for the longest time, chances are you're going to come out ahead. Tommy? Uh, you know, I, I agree 100% with Kelly. I, I'm not looking for the ball that I can bowl 250 with every game. I'm looking for the ball that eliminates the 150 every fifth game. Um, all we're trying to do is, is somewhere stay around, you know, after, if you're on A squad, you kind of watch the scoring pace a little harder. If you're on B squad or C squad, then you, you know, you have an idea what the scoring pace is. You mm -hmm. can go in there with a, with a different demeanor. But, uh, you know, keeping the ball in play and, and eliminating those smaller, you know, or those mistakes that, that are, end up being disasters when you bowl 160. You know, 210, 210, 210, that's 30 over. 250, 160, that's 10 over. And now you still got to bowl 220 to be that 30 over. So keeping the ball in play and finding a more predictable ball that uh, allows you to be more consistent crossing pairs, crossing the house with the people you follow has always been my key ball majors. Okay. Interesting. Jason? You know, I'm, I'm right there with both of them. I just, you know, I want to keep the ball in play. I want to know that if I'm going to catch a bad pair or I don't throw it particularly well for that game, that it's going to be a 190 or 180. Mm -hmm. You eliminate your 160s and 170s at the U.S. Open, you have a really good chance of winning that tournament by the end of the week. So you constantly want to remind yourself that uh, physically, let's keep it simple. Let's, let's not try and over rev the ball. Let's just try and repeat shots and just keep it consistent as possible. And finally, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. It was, you know, just you got to keep the ball in play and uh, just try to just try to make good shots and uh, fill the frames, and make your spares, and uh, that's most most important. You know, hopefully get a, get a couple big games and try to stay away from those uh, 150s, 160s. So what I'm hearing from you is consistent spare shooting, a little bit less axis rotation, so where the ball is rolling a little more end over end, as opposed to trying to make the ball recover down lane and keeping the ball in play and and uh, managing your, your equipment very well and uh, keeping a good frame of mind. That seems to be the theme that I hear amongst uh, the folks here that have won all the major championships. And, and just like Liz said, it's, it's not a sprint, it's an endurance race. You're not going to win the U.S. Open in the first game or the first eight. It's at the end of those 48 games or however long the format is, we'll decide who the winner is. So just know that if you shoot the 160, eventually you may come back. Hopefully you avoid those games, but know that you have time to make it up. Great. This is uh, incredibly insightful uh, by some folks that have been very successful um, in several major championships. So hopefully this, uh, this helps again, another piece that helps everyone prepare a little bit better um, so that they can be the best they can be. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this series of, uh, of videos that uh, certainly um, as I get a chance to spend some time with the best players in the world, actually uh, uh, 
reminds me of how difficult this game of ours really is. So thanks a lot for your, for your time and good luck. Hi, I'm Kelly Kulik, 2010 US Open Women's Champion. I invite you ladies to come on out and sharpen your skills and learn about the game of bowling. You will be entitled to work with some of the best coaches there is in the sport of bowling. If you're looking to sharpen your skills, learn about the US Open pattern, and someday be a future competitor in this event, I encourage you to come out, put on your shoes, tie them up, and give it a go. You too can bowl to win. Bowling's US Women's Open, presented by the brands of Ebonite International.